in uh, grief, as the Bible says, and he was a saint. Sir, you know that I love you. Why are you asking? He did not say, why are you asking? So repeatedly, but he expressed in his heart, he's asking the same question again and again. And the third time, maybe Jesus knew his heart, and if he was, uh, he, you know, to comfort him, he used the same expression that Peter used. And but still, he was asking that Peter feed my sheep. What does it mean to ask today? When Jesus said, do you love me? And then you will say, yes, sir, I do. Then the same way, in the same manner, Jesus will ask you, show me. Show me. Prove it. That's why I sent the messages already uh, before that. The, today's title is, uh, show your love for Jesus. In, in our life, in our life in the factory, our life in the home or school, wherever we are placed, we as a born again Christian, as a child of God, we need to prove, prove that we have a love for Jesus. That's what Jesus is asking Peter, and that's exactly the same that God, that Jesus is asking us. Show me your love for me. Amen. Right. And we can really cannot say that uh, I always love you non-stop 24 hours. But it doesn't mean that 24 hours you are always repeatedly saying that I love you, I love you, I love you. But you don't have to prove it that way, 24 hours. But there is a time to prove when, when you are under the trial when you are under the, some the, the difficult times, or when the, some church is asking you to, uh, that I need your participation or contribution, then that is a time that you need to prove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you are always ready to prove it, your love for the Lord, then you don't have to say, I am telling God that I love him 24 hours a day. So, it is very important to understand <coughs> how we can show our love toward God or Jesus. He's not that far away. The Bible says he's in our heart. So sometimes we cannot put into our action, but still God knows what we are thinking in our heart because he's there already. So it is very important to show or prove that we love, we have a love for Jesus not only having the love for Jesus, but with how we are putting them or putting it into practice to prove that we have a love for Jesus. There are many ways to prove or to show that we have a love for Jesus, but today I'm going to point out with the three essays. The first essence that we can easily prove that we have a love for Jesus is the one of the most popular words that we know from everyday living. It's obedience. Obedience. John chapter 14, verse 23 and 24 says, this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our avoid, uh, our avoid with him. And he that would uh, be not given, not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which is sent me. So, this clearly, verse 23, is a Jesus saying, Do you love me? Then follow my word. So, in order to prove that we have a love for Jesus, the first thing that we have to be ready is to follow his word through our obedience. And another another way, we can just not we can just say that yes, I follow him and I will follow him. But first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12, it says, Even so ye, for as much as ye are Jesus of the spiritual gift, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. This is a direct command from Jesus Christ. He said, 
if you love me, you follow my word. And then he said, in here, if you love me, build the church. Make the church a strong word. Then how can we build the church instead of using Nipaha, that we can build without cement concrete? Is that the way? <coughs> no, it's, it's not a building. It's the unity. It is a, the unity in spirit, unity in faith, unity in all the, uh, the ministry, that we really, individual, needs to be directly participating and contributing in the ministry Amen. to build the church. Amen. And that edifying means making the church stronger. Okay, it's not the building, but it's in each individual. And sometimes we fail and then we make somebody to stumble because of my mistake and then I make somebody to stumble and become weak Christian or backsliding Christian. That's the opposite. Opposite of this uh, the Jesus command. Edify the church. All right, what does the first ed the ed elements to, uh, to prove that, that I have a love for Jesus? Church is obedience. Many places in the Bible, all from the first page to the last, we have to show the obedience. We as a born again Christian. The second element to prove that we have that uh, the love for Jesus Christ next to the obedience is a sacrifice. Mm. The sacrifice we have been talking. The sacrifice equal to the love. The love and sacrifice are the same, like the one coin have a two sides. Then, 1 John chapter 4 verse 9 said, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live with Him. This particular verse is a sacrifice, the sacrifice of the God Father. Because the Bible says, God Father, he sacrificed his only begotten son for the sinners like you and me. And then the next one is John chapter 1 verse 29 says, The next day John said, Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now this is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So first, we are seeing the example of a sacrifice of God Father. And the second here now, we see the example of the sacrifice of Jesus, the Son of God, that whose turn it is. It is your turn and my turn that we need to, at least we have to imitate or follow the sacrifice of God Father, God Son, and ourselves, we were born again. And so, like the Psalm, Psalm 54, chapter 54, verse 6 says, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. I will freely. Now, not forced, but freely, with my own decision, with my own cheerful heart, that I will sacrifice whatever you have given to me. Yes. So there are three different kinds of uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice done by God. Sacrifice done by Jesus. And the third one is a sacrifice that you and I need to do for what purpose? To prove that I have a love for Jesus Christ. Amen. From time to time we need that. We don't have to show it to others, but we need to prove it to the Lord. Lord, this is what I can do. That many times, especially when they are newly born again, and that they are always concerned about the tidings. Oh, 10%, that's already big enough as a, as a one, one month salary in the Philippines. And how can I do that? But God is encouraging them for them to trust in the Lord because God says the way that you do, that He will compensate or bless more. It's not because God is a uh, poor, but because God wants to see the obedience and the sacrifice. If you do not believe in God, of course you will not think about the obedience. If you do not believe in God and uh, the sacrifice, 
then you sacrifice first so that God will uh, bless you more because of your sacrifice. And if you believe that you will, you will have a courage to do that, but if you don't believe that you will not do, and then what you're doing, you are selectively believing the Word of God just for your benefit. Oh, if I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and announce it, then I will be saved and I'll go to heaven. That is good for you so that you're choosing only that verse out of a whole Bible. And it's, yes, I got saved. But the rest is not yet. Not yet. Very selectively. Very self-centered. And that is what we have not opened the valve of our character as still that self is controlling our soul. So, among the three elements, first, obedience, second, sacrifice, and the third, third one is very easy to understand, but not easy to follow. It's a giving. And the giving. Right. Now, in Numbers chapter 18, verse 29, it says, Out of all your gifts, ye shall offer every kid offering of the Lord, of all the best thereof, even the hollow part thereof out of it. So, that means, among what God gave you, the best part is for the Lord. The best part or the first part. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 1, he says, Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Which means, when the Israel people uh, have sinned, then in order to uh, have their sins forgiven, they have to bring the small animals, or the, the lamb, or sheep, or any, the, even if the poor, they even have to bring the bird. And then uh, they bring the animals for the, to the, the, the priest, and the priest will kill that and shed the blood, because the Bible says there is no remission of uh, uh, sins without the, 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 the blood. So they will kill the animal and spread it on an altar and pray to God for the forgiveness of God. That is the Israelites, uh, the Old Testament way of uh, forgiving their sins. Okay. Now, when they bring this, they have to check very carefully if there is any wound or scars or anything that is not perfect. If the birds have the five fingers, it, you have to count carefully that whether it's only four fingers. That's what the Bible is saying. Because if you bring, that means it is checking, checking the mentality, mentality of the bird. If you have a many good, many good animals, and then I want to show, I want to prove to the church people that I am giving to the Lord. And so, what is the sick one? But it's a, the, something is not a limping, something is a limping word that the bring them, okay? And so they order to the servant and then bring these uh, imperfect animals and bring it to the priest. And that is, the priest may not know because it's a human, but God knows already that it is abomination, <clears throat> which means a disgusting behavior. So that means when we give to the Lord, we have to give the best, the first, and the perfect. Then not, it's not because of the amount, but because of our heart. And so uh, that is what the Bible is telling us. When we give, we have to know how to give. And we are not only giving the material, but giving our heart. Our heart is a truth, and our heart is a really honest, and then we are giving to Him, and then God will give peace. That's why the Second Corinthians chapter nine verse seven says, uh, "Every man according as his purposes in his heart." So let him give, not grudgingly or of a necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. Sometimes people will give 
my type is the one million, the, the one hundred thousand. So, but this time I'll give him more, uh, one one point two, because uh, I believe in God's promise that uh, more you give and that He will bless you more. So you you compute. I need uh, one and a half million next month, so I'll give him more tidings. Uh, that is not your forgiveness. Mm. That's a computing giving. Mm. And God will test you on that part, most likely, and he will not answer. Yeah, right. Because it's uh, uh, wrongly motivated. Mm. So, these three elements, obedience, sacrifice, giving, is a way that we can we can prove that we have a love for Jesus Christ in our living. So if you really want to say, if you really want to say or we are confident to say that I have a love for Jesus Christ in my life, then you have to remember this obedience, sacrifice, and giving. So now we we uh, now we understand three way of expression of our love for Jesus Christ. We know, we already know, uh, we can express by obeying, obeying, we can express our love for uh, sacrificing, and we can we can express our love for Jesus Christ by giving. But now we have to have an object, what to give. And what to give? But you already know, you heard of tens or more than a hundred times of that, God has given each one of us five treasure. Mm. Uh, that's a very simple. God has given us a five treasure. The first one, life. Second, heart. Third, time. These are all equal to everybody. Huh? Have, each one has one life, one heart, uh, 24 hours a day. And the next fourth one is talent. And the fifth one, least important treasure. I'd like to emphasize is the money. Okay, have a money also. And so, obedient, obe by obeying, by sacrificing, by uh, giving, we can express our love toward, love toward Jesus Christ with using five treasures like art, time, talent, and money. Okay, let's talk about the life. How we can how can you say to express our love to the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. When you say love, the life, it, it has a two meaning. The life of ordinary living. Huh? But sometimes there's another expression of life. When the when the the robber with a shotgun he comes to you. Oh, I know that you have a money. Give, give the money to me or I'll take the life. But that's a, that's a still life, huh? But some people say, no, I'm not going to give you my life. And no, the, the money. <laughs> and then some people just hold on to the money and then he lose both. Huh? His money and his life. Yeah. But anyway, how can we express our, our love for Jesus Christ using our life? Simple. God told the church, preach the gospel. Yeah. Go everywhere. Go to uh, Bohol, uh, Visayas, and Philippines, and Asia, and whole world, and preach the gospel. Then who has to go? Somebody. The missionary. Or the, the mission pastors. They have to go. When God called them to the ministry, of course, some people like uh, Jonah, they run away. But mostly, when God really called them, they cannot really run away. They will be, they will be obeyed at the end. Maybe after the after the punishment or what, but they still have to obey if God has really called. So when when uh, when God has called a person to be the missionary or the pastor, what do they have to give? The money. Lord, I have the money, so I'll give you the money and please save me from being a pastor or the missionary. Is that possible? It's not possible. He has to give his life. Only way that he can show that he has a love for Jesus 
And if God has called you into the ministry or her, then you really have to give your life. Yeah. I don't know where it happened, but during the Korean War in 1950s, early 50s, there was a communist uh, came down to the southern part of the uh, peninsula, one, one prov the province, then there was a small church. And because the communists did not really uh, prove it God, so they sur surrounded the small church and uh, captured whole people in the church. And then the head of the group, the communist soldier, was calling everybody one, everybody, everyone. And then put the Bible there and then telling them, if you step on the Bible, I will save your life. And then one by one forced, and then everybody, everybody stepped on the Bible because of the fear. But there was one young boy that who said, no, I will not, I will not step on the Bible because I live in God. I believe in God. And then if I die, I will go to heaven. So why should I? I like they are better than here. And he insisted. He did not want to save his life. But this communist soldier, head of the soldier, he killed all the people who stepped on the Bible, except that boy. Now, now it, it, it tells us that how we can stand for the Lord. And then that we try to give up our, our life for the Lord, but God saved us. Man. Right. And that's of course extreme example which happened during the war time. But it is really important that we need to give our life. Man. If we say, yes, Lord, I, I can give my life to you with a lip service, mm -hmm. then we are becoming not a Christian. Not a Christian. So rather than lip serving not a Christian, we must be a cheerful giving, a giving Christian, uh, even with our life. So that way we can prove that we have a love for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Second, how can we prove using uh, the, our heart? It's very simple also. I hope that we, uh, we do not have that kind of person in our church, but some other church, let's say some other church, the people are crowded, heavily crowded, and uh, many people are sitting in the one Sunday morning service. Their body is there, but their heart is at home. <coughs> and that very tasty food in the refrigerator. And while the, the messages are being preached, but oh, is somebody going to eat that? For example. So you, your body can be brought to the service, but your heart can be left some some place in the Hewa Dong, or in the or Namde Moon, or the Woody Bank, or anywhere, and then the people, the people who have this kind of uh, not everybody, not in our church, but uh, uh, the people who have this kind of a two separation, of the body is here in the church, the heart is outside the market. Usually, not always. Usually, they sit in the back row. <laughs> as soon as the service is over, they want to run away. <laughs> Even without saying hello to the pastor. And then they, they just do not want to get involved with any the, the, the team ministry or meeting or nothing. Just as soon as the closing prayer is being done. <laughs> their heart is not together with the body. And uh, their lifestyle is like this. Here comes Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The Sunday is getting closer. And they start calling and answering the phone. And they make an appointment on Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Right after the right after the service, that, that he will run to the some place or to the shopping or whatever with the friends and the relatives. And they're doing the morning service, their mind is already running into the Han River or the the supermarket, no more. Heart is not here in the service. If you keep the heart not in the worship service and in the some other places, you cannot prove that you have a love for Jesus Christ in your heart. 
Maybe that kind of person we can give another name. <laughs> Churchy Ann. Not Christian. <laughs> or Sunday, Sunday or. They pay to me 52 Sundays a year. They go to the Sunday with the Bibles, but their heart is always left in the refrigerator. <laughs> Very technical. God gave us only one heart, but how can we divide it to peace? And the one part is occupied by the Holy Spirit because they confess Jesus as their personal Savior. They are already a member of the church because they follow the baptism. And then they have a one part of a heart is, is uh, with the Holy Spirit, but the bigger part of a heart is still with outside. Very difficult to have a two hearts in one heart. Why? Because the Bible says in uh, James chapter 1 verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. There's nothing perfect, nothing can be done for the people who have a two heart. It is almost like a one man having two women. Or vice versa. Okay? You have, and then also you have a two churches, in case that you have a two churches, one church in the Philippines that uh, we grew up with, and then you are here in Korea, and then you have a PBC, it looks like you have a two churches, and you don't know which one you belong to. It is really you have to give your heart if you say that I have a love for Jesus Christ. So first, your life. Second, your heart. Third, the time. There's 24 hours. Except most of the OFWs, usually they say 8 hours of sleeping, 8 hours of working, 8 hours for my use. Usually they divide it 8, 8, 8 like this. So they make some 24 hours. But usually the OFWs, not 8, 8, 8. They usually have 10 or 12 working. And uh, if they insist to uh, work 10 to 12 hours, of course they have to cut 8 hours from the sleeping and 8 hours from my time. So you really have to uh, manage the time properly. But you insist, oh, I need to sleep 8 hours a day, and then I have to insist my uh, my uh, working hours, 10 hours, and then I have to insist on my uh, the television times, and then I have no time for the Bible reading. And I have no time for the posting, the DVD and the meditation. Is that the reason why we have a more green lines these days, and then more uh, yellow lines? The yellow line is the one who does not put the, uh, the meditation. The green light, the green color, is the one who does not even read every day. If you, if you have that one, if your names are under the green or the yellow, you have to settle that for tomorrow, today. Yeah. Because, because God gave you 24 hours, mm. and even if you want to cut down some of your uh, personal, uh, personal use of the time, then you give it to the Lord, and then read the Bible, or the, do the, the, the meditation, or come to the church regularly, and then you will be proven by God that you are, you really have a love for Jesus Christ. Yeah. It all depends on how you manage your time, and how you control your time. Mm. Otherwise, you will become very poor proof that you have a love for Jesus Christ. There are many uh, ministry in the church, soul winning, Praising, kitchen, cleaning, ushering, and administration. Many things are in this church. And almost everybody is involved. But are you expressing well? Are you being faithful in the ministry that God has given to you? If you are not faithful, then you have you cannot say that you have a love for Jesus. And what about the people, the same brothers and sisters who are in the same ministry? For example, if you are in the kitchen, I heard that there are many people who said, I'm going to be in the kitchen ministry, but sometimes I see only one person is working, or two person is working, and where are the rest? <coughs> and they enjoy eating. I do also. <laughs> but 
for people who committed, I will be in the kitchen ministry, and then they have to be there. Otherwise, the others will be loaded up with a heavy load because, for example, if there's a four people or five people uh, committed in the kitchen ministry and then only one or two person is on, on time, then the rest is not showing up, then what happens? It will be very difficult for them to take care of it all by themselves. And then if you continue not coming out, then the other co-members in the same ministry will say, ah, even God says something that they, uh, your, your friends in the same ministry will say, unreliable, labeled unreliable. We have a saying in Korea, I don't know how long it has been, but the people who does not keep the time do not do the business together. Mm. Because the people who cannot keep the time, that which is very, very small of the commitment, if they cannot keep the time, but they cannot keep the, the they cannot keep the bigger responsibility like the partnership in the business or doing like some other business, they never can do it. So it's better not to stop. So if you have a responsibility in even cleaning or anything, because of your giving up, the rest of the church will get weaker and weaker because of your irresponsibility. And the next is the talent giving. Talent giving. Very often in the Korea, I don't know in other countries, but in Korea, in like a Protestant, when they call it a big, big church, when we call it in Korea, big church, maybe more than 500 people or 1,000 people. And there are some churches which has more than 50,000 members in the church. But anyway, more than a few hundred members in the church, they have a beautiful choir. But sad to say, many of the churches, they are hiring, hiring the choir members from outside who major the voice, or the piano instrument. And so they they want to they want to be in the competition with other church because they want to show it on the television or radio. And so they have a beautiful presentation of a song, and as if they are in the the, the contest. And so they regularly pay the pianist, they pay regular soloist or the soprano or tenor, everybody who are who major the the voice or the instrument. If they have an orchestra, they pay. The one is, they can say, yeah, we need to give a, a much more beautiful music to the Lord. But you know what? If the pastor has decided that way, or if somebody has decided that way to hire for outsiders to make the singing beautiful, then they, that he is taking the uh, special privilege for that person to be cheerfully giving their talent to the Lord. Because their talent is already paid, they never have a chance to give a cheerful giving. When the Bible is saying God loves cheerful giver, it doesn't only mean the money. We have five things to give away, to give, give, give to God. Life, heart, time, talent, money. Whichever this, among these five, God wants to see the cheerful giver. And the God gave us a talent to build the church and have a very, very nice voice and a good instrument pianist, the pianist or old instrument player. And they, the, the church already hired that person and pay regularly or weekly or monthly. And then that person cannot feel the gratefulness to God because it is already paid. And what comes in, if the payment is small, there is a, already a complaint. Why, why I have been uh, singing in the opera for 10 years and then why you pay me less than the another one who's, who's been singing in the opera only five years? 
I have studied, I have studied uh, the music for uh, many, many years, but much longer than the other one, but you are paying less than the, that person. This is the greediness that Satan can give it to us. And uh, not only that, but it takes them away the joy of serving the Lord with a cheerful heart. It is very important to see, important to train the people in the church to give their talents freely to the glory of God. Then God will bless their lives more than a, a certain amount that they are paid. But lastly, we also can prove that we have a love for Jesus with a fifth the least important treasure, which is that your most favorite cash, the money. When God commanded to the Israel people when they were wandering around the wilderness for 40 years, and after that, uh, they finally came into the, the land of Canaan, and they start farming. Okay? When they were traveling, they were not able to farm. But after they come into the, the land of Canaan, they begin to uh, farm. That time, God told the Israel people in uh, Levi chapter 23, verse 10, See, uh, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be, be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest which means unto the, uh, the house of God. The first fruit, not only the best, but the first fruit. And also Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 also repeatedly say, Honor thy Lord, honor, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. The first fruits that God gave you. Now we are not uh, farming these days. And then we are working in the many different kinds of workplaces and our harvest is money and the cash. And we have to remember what God will be pleased and also how we can prove that we have a month, that we have a love for Jesus Christ using this fifth, fifth treasure. Luke chapter, Luke chapter 12 verse 34, it says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where you invest your treasure, your life, heart, time, talent, money, that your heart will follow there. If you, if you put more heart in the worldly side, then your heart is outside the church. But if your heart, if you, if you are uh, preparing for the heaven, and then if you are spending more time and more money and more of your possession for the ministry in the church, that means that you are investing for the future in heaven, then your heart will be there. That's what God is saying. Where your treasure goes, your heart follows. So, we, the way how to prove that we have a love for Jesus Christ is by obeying, sacrificing, and giving of what? Five items. Five treasures that God already has given to us. Life, art, time, talent, and money. You can easily say, yes, I can do that. Then the next question that Jesus said to the, uh, the Peter, prove it. Prove it. Feed my sheep means do it. But do it. Put into action. Not just thinking. Not just speaking, but put into action. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. It means many people can call Jesus, Lord, Savior, 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 but unless you do according to this, the word, according to the word of God, that we cannot enter into the heaven. Because so many people are following after Jesus Christ, when Jesus was here 2,000 years ago, 
and called him Lord, Lord, Lord. And Jesus rebuked the people in Luke chapter 6, 46. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? That means he is rebuking that we talk but no action. Finally, in the book of James, chapter 2, verse 26, it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without word is dead also. It doesn't mean that we got saved, we can be saved by, by doing. No, it is not. We are saved only by faith without words. Mm -hmm. But after you got saved, you can be proven by doing works. Okay? What does Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says that the one of our soul reading verses? God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He proved his love. Amen. He proved his love. And so, Romans chapter 8 verse 12 says we are indebted. Romans 8 chapter, 12, uh, chapter 8 verse 12 says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. That means Jesus died for, to save us, so we owe him our life. So we are we are the debtors. What do we have to do? We have to pay it back. Where, where should we pay back? In heaven? No, before we go to heaven. Before we go to heaven, while here in the earth, especially while you God sent you to work as OFWs in Korea. And this church is happened to push you to pay it back. How can we pay back? Show your love for Jesus Christ. By obeying and sacrificing, sacrificing and giving the five treasures that you have. And to whom that we should give? Your Kabbalah. There are 50,000 or 60,000. We've been praying for this church to fill up this uh, 100 seats, but it seems like it's almost impossible. But it's not impossible. Why? Because it's possible in Christ. We need to we need to prove that we have a love for Jesus Christ and sac obey and sacrifice and giving, and then we pay it to the other OFWs and Pinai Bride and the students, and then this church will be filled up and then we may have to decide to buy extra chairs. Now it is very important how to prove that we have a love for Jesus Christ. And we have to prove it. Otherwise, it cannot be giving us a joy because we cannot prove it. Let's open 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, verse 16 to 19. First John chapter 4 verse 16 to 19. We will read it all together. Ready to go. And we have known and believed the love that God has loved us. God is love and he that willeth in love, willeth in love, and God in him. Here is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear is according. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. 19. We love him because he first loved us. So, now you got the answer how we can prove our love that. We say that we have a love for Jesus Christ. We can we can put into action yeah. obeying, right. sacrificing, and giving, mm -hmm. and then you will you will accomplish the, the, the command that God has given to us. And uh, Matthew chapter twenty-two, verse thirty-seven, thirty-seven and thirty-nine. Yeah. Uh, it says. If you're there, let's read all together. Amen. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and 30, 39. 
When you go, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto me, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thy neighbor, I'd like to once again remind you, is OFWs and United Pride. Because there are not many Oriatos here, that's your neighbor. Mostly, OFWs. And uh, whenever I meet uh, new pastors in the Philippines, they always say to me, Pastor Lee, I appreciate very much because you are you are ministering the about my kababayan. It's not me, it's God doing it. But it's God's ministry, but we are not really doing very well. Why? Because we are not filling up the house with the members. We have only a few members in each year, and we have a few members going home, and so we are not increasing. So we have to, we really have to give our obedience and sacrifice and giving in order to prove that we have love for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, we have a, a church camp is coming. Uh, and sooner or later, we will be hearing about this, uh, who will be coming and who will, who will be not coming, but I do not want to agree with the members, at least the members that who, who, are, who are still in Korea and who are not in the hospital, they want to come. Yeah. So if you think you are not coming, Please see me today before you go home. Mm. And then we pray together and so you can go, go to the camp together. Amen. Some of them, some of the people that who thought they cannot go already talked last Sunday. But the people that I was sitting last Sunday was not there. But if you think you have a problem, please see me Amen. before you go home today. So we will pray together and so you can go together. Amen. So this is very important. Obedience sacrifice and giving. Yes. That way that you can prove that you have a love for Jesus Christ. Yes. So I'd like to ask you to close your eyes before we are finishing my message and search your heart and see whether there is a, some some area that you are not really understood. But now you understand very clearly and you want to say, Lord, I want to prove that I have a lot love for Jesus Christ from now on. Please give me the courage. And so I can be very brave, whether in the factory, or in the school, or at home, then I will do that. So if you want to do that, why don't you raise your hand and show your heart to the Lord. Lord, please give me, help me. Yes, God saw your hand. Yes, God saw your hand. Yes, God will bless your heart. Yes, God saw your hand. Yes, God saw your hand. Yes. You can put your hands down because God already saw you. And please pray to God. Lord, please give me the courage. So everywhere, everywhere I go, whatever I do, I want to prove that I have a love for Jesus Christ in my heart. Why don't you come forward and pray to the Lord to give Him. Just briefly ask Him to give you the courage. While the piano is being played, you can ask Him Lord, please help me. and difficulties will sometimes uh, dis, dis, uh, dis, um, disappoint us and we become discouraged. Lord, but help us to be strong because we, it is possible that we can always 
overcome this with the help of the Holy Spirit. Lord, help the brothers and sisters who raise their hands and who came forward to pray to God for this so they will be a good uh, witnessing and they can show that they have a love for Jesus Christ in their life and so they can be always happy and cheerful giver. Obedience, sacrifice, and giving. So they, they can use that to use uh, five treasures that they have. Lord, once again, thank you for the message. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Salamat po.